John McGovern, welcome to Forest TV, our double European Cup winning captain. On Sunday at the City Ground, we renew our rivalry with uh, Liverpool, who we had so many fantastic matches with in, in that unforgettable late 70s period. But what do you remember of that era? Well, obviously, getting promoted, you know, to get in the, the first division, as it was called then. Uh, because if you, if you play any sport, you want to play at the top, and, and that was the top. Um, and then you want to play against the best sides and obviously Liverpool were the best side around by far um, but you wanted to go and play against the Manchester United's, the Tottenham's, you know, the Liverpool's you know, any big side you wanted to play against and, and being underdogs I suppose you went in possibly not under as much pressure as normal so so we went into you know, our first season in the, the first division after winning promotion Went into it with a, no reservations really because, you know, we had the most positive management duo in the country uh, keeping us right. But just to play against this team was exciting, exhilarating and, and you couldn't wait to start a game. The squad were confident, the players were confident, you know, because we'd won promotion, we're in the big time. And uh, if they say that, you know, if you're in the big time, you should try and enjoy it. Well, we certainly did. <laughs> And what do you remember about that Liverpool team from that era? I think the, they were so consistent. You know, I mean, the, the true sign of a, a good professional is if he's consistent. And, and they'd proved that, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, obviously our first encounters with them were interesting because, you know, we hadn't been playing them season in, season out. So it was a, a brand new experience. But what we found, strangely enough, is if we put our lot in and given the normal rub of the green which you need in a, a team sport when you're playing against another side, um, you know, you've got a chance of doing something. And I think after the first game we played against them, you know, we, we kind of said to ourselves, well, you know, actually we didn't do too bad. <laughs> Either they're not quite as good as we're making them out to be or, you know, maybe we're a little bit better than we'd imagined. So, so that was it. It was not tentative, but, you know, just exploratory, really. You know, first time for this, first time for that. And, uh, yeah, again, it was, it was an enjoyment. So, John, looking back on that first season when we got promoted in 1977-78, we had a fantastic start to the season and Liverpool came to visit us on Boxing Day 1977 here at the City Ground uh, and a massive crowd were there that day. I think they just about got them all into the ground. Um, in fact, if my memory serves me well, there was one corner uh, where the, the fans were almost spilling onto the edge of the pitch. And I think it took a few stewards to, to get some of them back before John Robertson could take it. So um, professionals love playing in front of big crowds and they didn't come any bigger than that day with some of them on the pitch for part of the match. I'm sure it's something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives as well. And that game, of course, finished one all. And just um, a couple of months later, in March 1978, we qualified for our first major final since 1959, uh, when we met Liverpool in the League Cup final, um, first of all at Wembley, in front of 100,000. What do you remember of that game? Well, it was memorable for me, actually, because I'd, I'd just been declared fit, uh, I think, that week to play in the final. But unfortunately, it didn't manage to last out. Um, so I had to go off injured, which is... One of the most disappointing things that can happen, um, that you come off injured. Um, and I came off injured knowing the fact that I won't be fit for the replay, which I think was just the week after. So, you know, we, we'd drawn the match eventually. Um, and the only thing that I was really sort of disappointed about was that I'm, I'm not going to be there for the replay at Old Trafford. Um, but the game was a tight game. I'm not sure the games were fantastic pieces to watch, actually, when we used to play Liverpool because they were good at defending, we were good at defending, they were quite good at attacking, we were good at attacking. So, you know, stalemate used to be the scoreline for quite a few of the matches. And, and, and I mean, that one, obviously, when it's at Wembley, is uh, a titanic game for everybody. Uh, but again, we gave as good as we got and, and managed to come away and push it into a replay against Liverpool. So, you know, it was another kind of plus mark for us, I think. And again, just made them hesitate a little bit when they played Nottingham Forest. And just four days later, it was off to Old Trafford. 
uh, where we won the trophy with a John Robertson penalty. You are on the sidelines, as you said, you got injured. What do you remember of the evening? Well, I, I remembered again the game was very tight, you know, and John O'Hare had kind of filled in for myself. Um, and he's the one that actually got the penalty. Um, and obviously there was there was a, a, a roar of, you know, no, it wasn't a penalty, it was outside the box, you know, and in the stands, but... Um, John O'Hare again was was able an able player, you know, with lots of ability. So you know, I'm glad actually for him, you know, that he contributed that much by winning the penalty. And then of course we know John Robertson's going to take it, and we know he's going to score. <laughs> so, but I think um, what was sat in the stands, and I think it was maybe Peter Shilton and I jumped the highest when the final whistle went. Um, and I can't remember actually if we got down on the pitch I don't think so because uh, we were up in the stands but uh, again we'd played the best team in the country and came out on top and in that game of course Chris Woods had deputised for Schiltz and 120 minutes at Wembley and then a 90 minutes more at Old Trafford keeping Liverpool at bay and just a couple of months later at the end of that season we went back to Anfield and this common theme of uh, Liverpool being unable to score against Forest in that era uh, reoccurred with a 0-0 a draw to finish the season and extend our unbeaten run. On that evening, Kenny Burns had gone down to London to collect his Player of the Year award. What do you remember of that evening at Anfield? Well, yeah, we were all delighted for Kenny, but, you know, it was something that normally I think Mr Clough would have drawn a line through and said, I'm sorry, Kenny, you know, but, you know, there is quite an important game against a team called Liverpool to play, but, you know, he was excused and Colin Barrett came in, filled in for him and, and again, you know, we, we ground out a result, you know, and people said, oh, well, it's the end of the season, it doesn't matter. Listen, when you're a professional, everything matters. You know, training, reserve matches, testimonial matches, friendly matches, they all matter because you want to win them all. So again, we went out and, and fully justified the position that we were in by getting a draw there at Anfield. So we've won the league in our first season back in the top flight. We've won the League Cup as well. The next season, of course, we qualify for the European Cup. Uh, match due to be played in the middle of September. The draw gets made. What were your thoughts? Well, we're all, we're all there listening for the, for the draw to come along, you know, and, and there's a discussion between the players, you know, I want to go to Germany, you know, and, and then other people say, no, I don't want to go to Germany, I want to go to Holland, you know, and then I want to go to France, you know, and then we draw Liverpool and we all went, come on, they're not, we're not even going into Europe, we're not even leaving the country, you know, and it's the European Cup, so there was a bit of a laugh made out of it, but of course... Mr. Clough had the final word when he said, just listen, he said, he said, they will not be happy in drawing us. And of course, that evening, uh, a young centre forward called Gary Bertel started as Liverpool came here to the city ground. What do you remember of that evening? Well, I mean, for Gary, it must have been, you know, a real massive night for him playing. But uh, he'd made a remarkable transition. But the one thing that was in Gary's favour was, you know, he's coming into a good side, you know, with good players. So if there's any kind of small time needed for him to, to get used to the players, he'll have noticed in the first training session with them, you know, that we could, we could go out and have a laugh in training. Um, and when it came to a match, if, we, if he ever got the ball, he wouldn't be left stranded because there'd be somebody saying, Gary, I'll have it. So it was, it was this quality of the the rest of the team that if you came into a side like that you know you, you won't be carried but you know you certainly would be eased into it and helped from the other players so it was a it was an easy transition for Gary but you know for anyone to say you know how was it going to be for Gary he grabbed that chance with both hands and and was superb in everything that he did so we're one nil up through Gary's goal in the first half late on in the second half what was going through your mind well, we just definitely wanted to get a second goal because obviously we know we've got to go and it's a return leg. It's not a one-off game. So, um, but the surprise was obviously the scorer. You know, you don't you don't expect one of our fullbacks to get a goal, especially against Liverpool. And I think they were more surprised than anyone else that that Colin Barrett popped up. You know, and and, and smashed one in in the closing stages of the match. Um, but we weren't surprised really because, you know, Viv Anderson and, and Colin were our fullbacks. But, you know, when we were in possession, if they wanted to go forward, you know, they had carte blanche to go forward and get involved to, to help try and, you know, break down stubborn teams, especially teams like Liverpool who could defend so well. 
Um, and it was kind of my position as the, as the holding man in midfield that if he goes forward and we lose the ball, then I'm the one that has to move across either side to try and fill in for them if needed. So, you know, we all understood that. And, and we were a positive side anyway that didn't wait to gather the pace of a game. We tried to create the pace of a game. But the, the matches against Liverpool were always hectic and you didn't have that long on the ball before somebody's crashing into you. So it was better to have something in your mind when the ball came to you about where it's going next. So we go to Anfield two weeks later with a, a two-goal cushion. Um, how did you feel going into that game? Capacity crowd at Anfield, red hot atmosphere. And of course, in that season, Liverpool ended up reclaiming the title from us. Had a fantastic team, it's recognised as such. Scored 85 goals in the league that season, conceded only 16. Yet they needed to get two against us. How confident were you going into the game? I think the second goal at the City ground maybe hadn't dampened their spirits, you know, but just made them very, very aware that, you know, we were a a dangerous team to play. Uh, we'd already proved it anyway uh, in the League Cup, so, you know, the season before. So it was a case of when we went there, we just play our normal game, uh, everybody back when we lose the ball, and then we try and get men forward when it's possible. Um, I can remember Peter Shilton making one save of note during the game, but apart from that, you know, once we put the barriers up, you know, we were brilliant at defending and helping each other out. And uh, we just frustrated them, I think, more than anything else. And in the league in that 78-79 season, uh, we ended our, towards the end of our campaign, we drew 0-0 with the, the then the imminent champions Liverpool here at the City Ground. But earlier in the season, Liverpool finally got one up on us by ending our 42-match unbeaten run in November of 78 at Anfield. What are your recollections of that 42-match undefeated run? Well, the strange thing about it was that when it happened, there was no big hurrah from anyone. Um, but I think that's because these are days before satellite television. These are days before the matches are covered, you know, in such authority and, and, and such depth. So, so when it came... Um, about going 42 games, there was very little actually publicity about it. I think mainly because it was spread over two seasons. But having said that, it was it was a wonderful achievement, and uh, you know you look back on it now and think, wow, it was a real achievement. You know, from the side to go 42 league games without losing. The strange thing was that you know we we lost the title that season to Liverpool, um, and believe it or not, we only lost three league games out of 42, and we never won the league. So <laughs> that statistic alone in modern-day football would look a bit strange. But again, it was just uh, an achievement that you, you're really proud of when you look back on it. And that match was the first time in seven attempts that Liverpool had got one over on us um, after we got promoted in, in 77. And was the first time they'd scored against us in over nine hours of football. What does that say about the defence and the midfield and indeed the attack that we had in that era? Well, I think we were very similar to Liverpool in some ways because, you know, we had strengths in all departments. You know, you start right from the goalkeeper and go through the side and you could pick their star players and pick our star players and, and say, it's going to be the toss of a coin who wins a match between both of us. Um, and I think that was very, very true. Um, there was no dominance from any side in any of the matches because they're both equally matched with the amount of talent they've got in, the attitude of the players, which I think was a credit to English football. And if you consider that at the time, English football was dominating the European Cup. And it did. Six out of seven years, we kept the European Cup in this country. Doesn't happen now. <laughs> So with Liverpool having won the league in 78-79 and us, of course, winning the European Cup, in the 1970-80 season, the, the rivalry continued where we played them across three different competitions in the league, in the League Cup and in the FA Cup. In the league, both teams won their home matches. However, in the League Cup, we, we clashed in the semi-final, first of all, here at the City Ground. Again, a tussle. <laughs> um... Two titanic teams playing each other. And again, um, perhaps not the greatest game to actually watch, you know, because of the frustration of both teams. You know, I mean, defensively, 
I think you know we were as good as Liverpool. Uh, we'd proved it in the past, and it was a case of it. We needed something slightly different or something inspirational to get a goal. Both sides had players capable of doing that, but you know, would they be given the space and time? Doubtful, and it proved to be true. And before we went back to Anfield for the second leg of the League Cup semi-final, we were also drawn against Liverpool at home in the FA Cup here at the City Ground, and this was one of the rare occasions where Liverpool came here and, and went away with the honours. Yeah, in the FA Cup. Um, we didn't have a fantastic run, I don't think, in, in any FA Cup competition I played in. And, and I think possibly it's because we've played so many League Cup games and so many league games, the FA Cup being later in the season, that I think we perhaps ran out of steam with the cup matches. Um, so disappointment, obviously, because you're in front of your own fans as well. You know, when if you lose in front of your own fans, you, you know, you feel sad for them because, you know, they help create the atmosphere and, and make the game a real pleasure to play in. So, so you know... You lose at home, you just hope that the next time we play against them, you know, we, we might get the better of them. And of course, that match followed not long afterwards when we went to Anfield for the second leg of the League Cup semi-final. And it was another John Robertson penalty that helped put us through with just a very late David Fairclough consolation for Liverpool in return. Yeah, I think like any side, you know, we'd gone there and we're winning 1-0 and we think, right, we'll contain, you know, which we'd managed to do in the past. But, you know... They managed to get one very, very late in the match, and uh, it's it's still a little body blow. You can say, "Oh, we've done all right," but you know, when you when you when you're in front and there's only a few minutes to go, and you can see, it just leaves a nasty taste in your mouth when you leave the pitch. And of course, at the end of that season, it was repeat of the season before, in that Liverpool won the league. You lifted the second European Cup. What are your memories of the end of that 1980 season? Well, obviously, I think the the European Cup triumph, you know, where we were playing against Hamburg, uh, we've lost Trevor Francis, our main striker, Kevin Keegan, ex Liverpool, is actually playing for Hamburg, uh, but it's in a magnificent venue, the Bernabeu Stadium in Madrid, Real Madrid's ground. So, again, we, we go in as the European champions and underdogs <laughs> because of obviously Trevor Francis missing, you know, our star striker. And we go into that match, and it's it's again it's very similar when you've got two really good teams playing against each other. But we managed to hold out, and our best player, who's been celebrated by everyone, I think, as the best Nottingham Forest player of all time, you know, he scores a great goal in the first half. Actually, Kevin Keegan could have brought him down, but being a forward, I don't think he thought about it as he was going through on the edge of the box. So he lets him get a shot in that goes in off a post. And uh, I certainly remember the second half when uh, the game's still 1 0. We are still holding out. We don't look that comfortable, but you know, we, we would never be overrun by anyone. And, and the sight of Gary Burtles chasing everything. You know, I mean, he he must have run miles and miles that night, you know, and it, I think he could hardly walk by the end of it. And we were similar. Um, I don't think the wisdom of a week in Mallorca before we went to the final was the best thing, but <laughs> we only ran out of steam after we'd won the match. So such a fantastic era, 1977 to 80, for both sets of supporters. Um, if we fast forward now to 2022... You're here um, fulfilling a role as a club ambassador. You therefore watched a lot of games this season. We face Liverpool on Sunday in the sixth round of the FA Cup. What's your thoughts on the game? Well, I'm just delighted it's taking place, you know, especially because we've beaten Arsenal, we've beaten Leicester, two Premier League sides before, before the tie against Liverpool. Um, could we beat Liverpool? I couldn't say yes, because Liverpool are a different Premier League side than even Arsenal and Leicester. But, you know, we've earned the right by knocking out two Premier League clubs. We've got a, a team of players that never give up. We've got a team of players that in quite a lot of matches this season have come from behind to win matches, both home and away. So the players, I'm just delighted for them because they will be looking forward to this so much so they can prove, listen, we're a good side and you're going to have to work really hard if you think you're going to beat us. And it's at the city ground. The fans will be fantastic. You know, verbally, they'll out-chant the Liverpool fans. Absolute certainty. So I'm just looking forward to the occasion. And uh, in all team sports, you need the rub of the green. 
Um, and let's just hope we do get the rub of the green and maybe a blind eye by the referee in case there's an important decision made against Liverpool. <laughs> so, and with fingers crossed. <laughs> As somebody would have once said, let's hope nobody is stupid enough to write us off. That's very true. Um, but I don't think anyone will be. And um, Jurgen Klopp, their manager, he'll have a warning for his players that... Uh, Sometimes history doesn't repeat itself, but they must remember that to give us enough respect when they go out against us here at the city ground with a full house. And I'm sure they will. <laughs>